Hi guys, kumusta? Hello po. Live po tayo ngayon. And good morning. Happy Saturday. Okay. Yan po, meron tayong mga live viewers. Before tayo mag-start, hintay lang po natin maparami natin live viewers. Morning po sa inyo lahat. Morning po. Wow. Kanina po nanghihingi po ako ng possible hashtag natin for this webinar kasi hindi kami napag-isip nila Sir Mark and Mamel ng possible hashtag. At kung meron pa kayong possible na wow, meron na ako nakikita ng hashtag. Maganda-ganda. Okay. Morning! Good morning! Hi, nako. Sa lahat po ng mga public and private school teachers natin, good morning po sa inyo. And mula po sa buong Pilipinas and baka meron po nanonood from the different country, marami, ang magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Okay po? To start our webinar today about learning tricks and tricks tips and tricks on how to solve math competition problems, uh, mag-start po muna tayo sa prayer. Okay? My dear participants, our live streamers, pray po muna tayo. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father God, maraming salamat po sa araw na binigyan sa amin, sa kalakasan, sa katalinuhan, at sa mga biyayang pinagkakaloob niyo sa bawat araw. Lord, maraming salamat po sa opportunity na nakapag-share po kami ng aming expertise when it comes to mathematics at para matulungan na rin po yung aming mga dear fellow math teachers. Uh, we know that we are in the midst of pandemic, Lord. Lord, guide us through this day. Guide us po sa mga susunod pang araw na meron po tayo. Lord, guide us para po sa aming school year, sa lahat po ng mga educators na to. Uh, guide, us, guide us, Lord. And bigyan niyo po kami yung wisdom sa aming pagkuturo at sa pag-coach namin sa mga darating pang math competitions. Lahat po lang yun ay pinapalalangin namin sa pangalan ng Jesus. Amen. Okay, again, good morning po. Welcome po sa ating webinar entitled um, Webinar for Enhancement of Elementary Math Teachers Learning Tips and Tricks on How to Solve Math Competition Problems. And sa lahat po ng nanonood na ang ating live stream, nag-register. Yan po. Pinawelcome po namin kayo sa aming uh, joint effort na kung saan ang focus natin ay uh, maka-discover ng mga tips and tricks kung paano ba tayo mag-coach at kung paano ba natin i-handle yung mga bata natin during competition. So, ito po, kasama ko pa rin po sila. Uh, Sir Mark, and Mel, papakita ko lang po kayo. Good morning po. Hi, Ma'am Mel. Hello po sila. Hi, Ma'am. Hi, Sir Mark. Yan. Ito po yung mga kasama natin. Si Ma'am Mel from Las Parinas, Cavite. Same with Sir Mark. Mga idol po natin yan when it comes to math competitions and math coach. Hello po. Ma'am Mel, pakilala po kayo. Hi, hello po everyone. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you po sa mga uh, nanonood na live. And uh, thank you din kasi kahapon uh, nanood kayo. Same with today. I hope uh, I, I was able to enhance or I was able to uh, help you ng mga sample techniques on how to solve math problems. Same with today. I hope uh, matuto din po kayo. Teacher Gon. Teacher Gon. Hello. Hello, good morning. I'm working from home. Umuwi muna ako sa bahay. Good morning and uh, ayan, sana marami kayong matutunan na uh, solution sa umagang ito. Yeah, kita niyo naman. Yeah, nasa labas ako ng aming humble abode. Ah, sure gone. Work, literally work from home. Good morning to all our viewers. Hi, sir. Hello. 
Si Teacher Mel na. Okay po. Uh, si Sir Mark po, ay si Ma'am Mel po ang ating first na mag-present. Uh, she will be doing or discussing some math problems kung paano i-approach yung mga math problems na encounter sa grade 5. And then, after that, Sir Mark will present different problems from problems na under po ng grade 6. And I hope na matuto po kayo sa aming live stream. Okay? Again, good morning po sa inyo lahat. So, sana po, tuloy-tuloy lang po natin yung ating pag pagkatuto. Napakarami pang bagay na dapat natin discover within the realm, the realm of mathematics. Again, without further ado, let's have Ma'am Mel and, his, and her presentation. Ayan. Ma'am Mel, ready ka na? Yes, okay. Yan. Once again, hello po and good morning po sa ating lahat. Uh, today po, I will be uh, giving you tips on how to solve uh, some of fifth grade math competition problems usually na nag o sa mga oral rounds or mga uh, oral competitions. Uh, before that, uh, gusto ko muna pong batiin ang aming uh, math uh, supervisor po ng Desmarinas Cavite, si Ma'am Rowena Escariaga. Ma'am, good morning po. And I'm very much thankful to be part of Dep and Dasma. Napakasipag po ni ma'am. Usually when it comes po sa pagdetrain ng mga mathematics teachers. Uh, share po lang po, uh, every summer po, uh, nagkakaroon po kami ng enhancement seminar ng mga mathematics teachers. Lahat po ng mathematics teachers ng Dasmarinas. And then yearly din po, before po mag-start ang competition, meron din po kami uh, enhancement training para sa mga uh, mad trainers po ng Dasmarinas Kapite. Ayan, thanks po to Ma'am Karyaga po. And for today, without further ado, I will be giving you tips, sabi ko nga kanina, on how to solve fifth grade math competition problems. Usually po, yung problem po na ito is nag occur po sa mga oral rounds, sabi ko nga kanina. So the first one is, uh, ganito po. Usually, paano kapag binigyan ka lang po ng 30 seconds, o di kaya po a minute to solve this problem. Usually, ganun po yung uh, yung mga rules and regulation, you are going to solve this problem in 30 seconds or di kaya in a minute. So the first one is, what is the smallest number by which you can multiply 1,260 to make it a perfect square number? So kung magtatrya ng error po tayo, it would take us time. Matatagalan po tayo, maubos na yung oras, and we are not be able to answer the question. So ano po yung uh, techniques na gagawin po natin for us to solve this problem? The first one po ay, yan. So isulat muna natin this way. 1,260 times n is equal to a perfect square number. We are going to find the smallest number, which is the, uh, we denote that as letter n. So yung technique lang po in solving this one is uh, through prime factorization. So ano yung two numbers na when we multiply them, the answer is 1,260. And that is 126 times 10. And then, uh, prime factorization of 126, two numbers, now when you multiply them, that would give us 126 po, ay 63 times 2. Okay, next po, for 10 naman, we have 5 times 2. And for 63, we have uh, 7 times 9 or 9 times 7. And for 9, we have 3 times 3. Ayan po. Meron na po tayong uh, mga prime factorization po ng 1,260. And then, we write it this way. Isulat natin in this format. So, we have 7 times 5 times 3 raised to 2 kasi dalawa yung 3 natin dyan. And then, times 2 raised to 2 kasi dalawa din yung number 2 natin. Ano po yung next na gagawin natin? Kapag nakaganito na po yung format na siya, nilagay na po natin sa ganito, titingnan natin yung mga, uh, alin ba yung may, may, may square? Ang number na squared, number dito po ay 3 and 2. 
So kung square number na sila, kasi 3 raised to 2 and then 2 raised to 2 pag in square mo yan, uh, that would give us a square number of 3 and square number of 2. Ang gagawin natin, hindi na po natin sila isasama sa next computation natin. So ang matitira na lang po na hindi squared number ay 7 and 5. So ang gagawin natin, we need to multiply 7 times 5. That would give us 35. Therefore, the smallest number that which you can multiply 1260 para maging perfect square number siya ay 35. Okay? Ano lang pong gagawin? Prime factorization po. And then, remove natin yung mga squared number for us to get the final answer. Okay? Ang next problem po natin, this one din, uh, talks about naman tayo sa age problem. So, pag fifth grade na po yung bata, uh, sanay na po siya sa mga pag-create po ng algebraic uh, equation. Usually, sa third and fourth grade, kapag kalagitnaan ng taon, nag introduce na po tayo ng algebraic way in solving problem. So for this one, age problem po tayo, Dora is thrice as old as Lara. Four years from now, the sum of their ages will be 48. How old are Dora and Lara today? So for this problem, kung titingnan natin siya, in, in, babasahin natin siya in the usual way, medyo mahirap talaga siyang i-digest po ng bata. Usually kapag nagsisimula pa lang, uh, i-introduce mo yung algebra sa bata. So, ang una natin gagawin ay step by step muna natin siyang i-introduce sa bata. Paano, siya, paano po natin siya introduce? Like this one. So, isusulat muna natin na ang edad ni Lara is N at si Dora naman po ay 3N. Ano yung N? Ito yung uh, unknown number. Hindi natin, ang, uh, hindi natin alam kung ano yung edad ni Lara, kaya ang ginawa natin letter N. And then, pero alam natin that Dora is thrice as old as Lara. Okay? So, ang ginawa natin, yung edad ni Lara, which is N, we multiply that to 3, kaya meron tayong 3N, which is 3 times N. Next po. Ang next naman ay yung next sentence natin. Sabi doon, 4, four years from now, the sum of their ages will be 48. So, isa-isahin po natin i-digest po sa kanila yung, yung problem. So, kung si Lara ay N, si Dora ay 3N, Four years, four years from now, ang gagawin natin, we're just going to add plus 4 lang, di ba? So, mag a lang po tayo ng plus 4 sa kanilang, uh, eh, uh, sa kanilang age na uh, binigay sa problem. Okay? So, this becomes Lara is N plus 4 and then si Dora naman, 3N plus 4. Kasi nga, four years from now. Okay? Anong next step natin? The next one, yung next, uh, ano naman po, yung next sentence naman po sa problem. Sabi sa next sentence sa problem ay, the sum of their ages will be 48. So therefore, yung Lara's age, four years, in four years, and then Dora's age, uh, after, uh, in four years from now, if we add them together, the result will be 48. Kaya meron tayong Lara's age after four, uh, four years from now, and then Dora's age four years from now, that would be 48. Kaya ganyan po yung equation natin. Ang next po ay, ilalapat na po natin siya. Okay? Uh, paano yon? So, n plus 4 plus 3n plus 4 is equal to 48. Yung Lara, which is n plus 4, and then with kay Dora, which is 3n plus 4, we combine them together, the result would be 48. Kaya meron tayong n plus 4 plus 3n plus 4 is equal to 48. Okay? Okay, we combine like terms. So, ang, ang like terms po natin, we have n. So, n plus 3n is equal to 4n. And then 4 plus 4, so we have 8. That would be equal to 48. Simplify lang po natin. So, simplifying this one, it becomes uh, 4n is equal to 48 minus 8. Okay? That would be 4n is equal to 40. So, divide both sides by 4 for us to get the, num uh, the value of letter n. So, therefore, yung n natin ay 10. 
ito na ba yung sagot natin? Hindi pa po. Okay? So, ilapat muna natin siya this way. So, after four years, kung si kung si Lara ay 10, kasi sabi dyan ay N, which is 10. So, si Lara is equal to N, and N is equal to 10. Kaya, therefore, Lara is 10 plus 4. Uh, she will be 14 years old four years from now. And then, si Dora naman, uh, 3 times 10, 3 times ng edad ni Lara, we have 30 plus 4 is equal to 34 years old. Okay, 4 years from now. But the question is, how old are Dora and Lara today? So, Lara, Lara's age is 10 years old, while Dora, hindi na po nakita sa screen, si Dora po ay 30 years old. Okay po? Yan. So, next slide na po tayo. Ang next slide po natin ay, okay, a fastest way to identify if a number is divisible by 7. Paano nga ba natin ma-identify kung ang isang number ay divisible by 7? Okay. Actually, masasearch po natin sa net yung divisibility rule. Sabi ko nga kahapon, ito dapat yung ini-introduce natin sa bata. Pero when it comes to divisible by 7, minsan na-skip siya. Hindi, hindi nakikita or uh, iba ang nandoon lang ay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 8 na agad, 9, and so on. So, for today, I'm going to teach you how to solve the fastest way to identify if number is divisible by 7. Actually, meron pong dalawang paraan para, para malaman kung isang number is divisible by 7. Actually, siguro madami pang ibang paraan, pero dalawang lang po yung alam ko. Yung una po, before ko introduce tong uh, technique na to, yung una po ay yung last number, is square lang siya. And then, yung sagot mo doon, isusubtract mo sa remaining numbers. Okay? So, square yung last number, and then, isusubtract mo sa remaining numbers. Okay? And then, titingnan mo kung yung result ay pwede bang i-divide sa 7. If not, hindi siya pwede. If yes, then it is divisible by 7. For today, ang introduce ko po ay, ito yung tinatawag na chikas test. Okay? Example we have is 532 divisible by 7. Okay, halimbawa, binigyan ka lang ng 15 seconds. Yung bata, binigyan lang ng 15, 15 seconds or less. Is 532 divisible by 7. Okay po. So, ito po yung isang technique kung paano isosolve siya. First one, at the first step, gagawin po natin, kukunin natin yung last digit of any whole number. So, kung 532, ang last digit niya po ay 2. And then, we are going to multiply it to 5. Imo-multiply natin siya sa 5. Okay? So, multiply that to 5. 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Kinuha lang natin yung last digit. And then, minultiply natin sa 5. Ang susunod po na step, add this to the remaining part of the number. And you will get a new number. Paano yon? So, di ba sa ang number is 532? Yung last digit ay 2, yun ang ginamit natin na multiply sa 5. So, ang gagawin natin, yung 10, i-add po natin sa 53, sa remaining numbers. So, 10 plus 53 is equal to 63. Okay po? Now, the question is, ang 63 po ba divisible by 7? Divisible by 7 po ba ang 63? Yup, divisible by 7 siya. Therefore, 532 is divisible by 7. Okay po? So, pwede din yung unang sinabi ko na formula, yung nag, you take the square and you, you subtract it. Pwede din yun. Pero, what if, what if po, binigyan po tayo ng bigger number. Okay? Paano kung bigger number? Kaya yung second formula ang introduce ko sa inyo, now we multiply the last digit to 5 and then we add it to the remaining number. So, uh, ipapakita ko sa inyo example ng kung bigger number naman po ang tanong. Okay? So, what if it's a bigger number? Okay, so we have 
2,401 is divisible by 7 in 10 seconds. Titingin pa ako sa comment. Okay, so may nag-comment na po ng yes. Uh, let Iche-check po natin kung uh, divisible nga po ba, divisible by 7 nga po ba to. So same with the steps na ginawa natin kanina, pupunin natin yung last digit which is 1. Okay, so 1, we multiply it to 5, it becomes 1 times 5. Okay, ano yung sunod na step? I-add natin yung 5 which is the result to the remaining number. Ano yung remaining number natin? 240. So 240 plus 5 is 245. Okay. So yung ibang bata, they can easily identify kung divisible by 7 na ito. So kapag nagsisimula pa lang yung bata, uh, ano po yung gagawin natin? Kasi bigger number pa din po yung result. Uulitin pa din po natin ang process. Okay. We get the last digit ng 245. Ulitin lang natin yung process. Ano yung last digit ng 45? That is 5. Multiply natin sa 5. And then, we add it to the remaining number. So, 5 times 5 is 25 plus 24. That would give us the result of 49. Okay. Is 49 divisible by 7? Divisible by 7 po ba ang 49? Yup. Good. Um, if it is divisible by 7, therefore, 2,401 is divisible by 7. Okay po. Yan. So, you can choose. Pwede mo nga introduce sa bata yung unang sinabi kong technique at saka yung pangalawang technique. So, yung unang technique, ito yung you get the square ng last number and then you subtract to the remaining number. Yung second, ito naman yung second one, we get the last digit, we multiply to 5, and then we add it to the remaining number. Bakit pinili ko po ito? Bakit pinili ko na ito yung i-introduce sa bata? Kasi po, sa Actually, pag, nag, pag nagtitrain po ako ng bata, mayroon din po akong notes. Nag-notes po ako kung ano yung mga weakness niya, ano yung mga strength niya. Ano yung mga weakness na concept ng bata, ano yung mga strength na concept ng bata. Isa sa, pin, isa sa napansin ko po when it comes to operation po, isa sa pinakamahinang concept, kahit gaano pa kagaling ang bata, medyo nag, it would, parang it would take the, the kid times, uh, ilang minutes or ilang seconds para masolve yun. When it comes to sub subtraction, na nahihirapan po sila sa pagsusubtract. Sa pagsusubtract uh, ng number sa isa pang number. para mas madali sa kanilang mag-add kaysa mag-subtract. Okay? O, oh. oh, magaling yung bata. Pero let's say, nasagutan niya sa pag-add ng 10 seconds lang. Pero when it comes to subtraction, nasagutan niya ng mga 15 seconds. O, gan yan po yung isa sa napapansin ko. And then, kahit ako din po, personally, ganun din po yung napapansin ko din sa sarili ko, mas mahirap mag-subtract kaysa mag-add. Kaya ito po yung ina-introduce ko sa bata. So, kung parang sa real life din po, kung i-relate po natin sa real life, di ba po sa totoong buhay, mas, mas madaling magdagdag kaysa mag-remove ng something sa buhay mo. Di ba po? Na, napakadaling magdagdag pero ang hirap pong mag-remove ng something sa buhay mo. Pero po, gradually, kapag sinanay po natin ang bata, sinanay natin ang sarili natin sa, sa subtraction, ma, masasagutan din po nila in just seconds po. Okay? Next? Okay po. Okay, so try nyo po to. Uh, una ko pong tanong, is 441 divisible by 7? Divisible by 7 po ba? Titingin po ako sa comment. Is 441 divisible by 7? 10 seconds po. Divisible by 7 po bang 441? Okay, meron na po nag-comment. Yes. Ang 441 po ay divisible by 7. Next po, is 522 divisible by 7? 
Tingin po lang ako sa comment. 10 seconds po. Ito na po yung tanong. Is 522 divisible by 7? Divisible by 7. Ayun, may nag-comment na po lang. No. 522 is not divisible by 7. Bakit po? Kasi po, 2 times 5 is 10. Plus 52, that would give us 62. Kaya, 522 is not divisible by 7. Thank you po sa mga nagko-comment. Okay. Next one po. Okay. Next problem na po tayo. Ito po. What is the remainder when you divide 7,135 by 9? Sagutin ko lang po yung tanong. Sabi, de, sabi po doon, Ano po, uh, paano po yung ibang remaining numbers? Excuse me po. Uh, pag trinay po natin yung search sa Google po, search po natin yung, yung mga rules on how to divide, uh, I mean, ang mga rules ng divisibility. Kung paano nga ba, how it works, yung divisibility rules. Pwede po natin isang search sa net. Yung 7 lang po yung pinili ko kasi uh, hindi po siya common na nakikita natin sa internet. Ang tawag po pala doon ay chika sa test. Okay, next naman po. What is the remainder when you divide 7,135 7, by 9? Ito po ay for 10 seconds. Okay? Paano natin tuturo sa bata? Isasagutan po ito ng 10 seconds sa actual uh, oral competition. So, what is the remainder when you divide 7,135 by 9? Dapat alam po natin kung ano ang divisibility rules ng 9. So, a number is divisible by 9 if the sum of all the digits is, dis is divisible by 9. Okay po? Okay, ang, ang, ang tanong po dito ay kung divis hindi kung divisible siya by 9, ang tanong po ay ano po yung remainder? Ano yung remainder kapag dinivide natin sa 7,135 ang 9? Okay. May nagko-comment na po. Thank you. So, i-add lang po natin siya. 7 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5 is equal to 16. Okay. 16 po yung result niya. Ang 16, ang next po na gagawin natin, ano yung number na divisible by 9 lower than 16? Mas mababa po sa 16. Ayun po, I see. Si 9 po ang pinakamalapit kay uh, 16. Lower po, pababa po. Lower than 16. So, 16 minus 9, that would give us 7. Therefore, the remainder is equal to 7. Okay po. So, what is the remainder when you divide 7,135 by 9 in 10 seconds? po agad ng bata yan ng the remainder is equal to 7. Okay po. Thank you po sa mga nagko-comment. Very active po. Okay, next question po tayo. Okay, so what is the 37th term in the following sequence? 3, 10, 17, and 24. Okay, so kapag by kling na ilang, ilang set lang po lang number, ang ginagawa po ng bata is continue a uh, continuous addition rather continuous addition po yung ginagawa niya paano kung isosolve lang natin to in a short span of time short span of time lang ang binigay sa atin para ma-solve po yung problem po na ito ano po yung gagawin natin okay i-introduce po natin yung formula in finding uh, the nth term of a certain number kapag parehas po sila ng interval ang formula po na ito ay ito po yung ang arithmetic sequence formula we have a of n is equal to uh, a of 1, a of 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Ano po yung a of n po natin? Yan po yung hinahanap natin. Yung 37 term, a of 37. Yan po yung hinahanap natin. And then, ano po yung a of 1 po natin? Yung a of 1 po natin, yan yung first term po natin, which is 3. Ano yung first term natin? 3 po. And then we have 
the end, ano po yung hinahanap natin na uh, pang ilang term rather? That would be pang 37 term, term, ayun po yung value ng letter, letter N po natin. Okay po. Next po ay letter D. Ang letter D po natin, ayan may sagot na po yung iba. Ang letter D po natin is equal to 7. Paano na kuha yung letter D? Yan po yung interval ng mga uh, ng set. So, ang gagawin natin, subtract lang natin yung second term sa first term, third term sa second term, fourth term sa third term. Dapat pare-parehas po sila ng sum. Uh, I mean difference. So, 10 minus 3, that would give us 7. 17 minus 10, that would give us 7. 24 minus 17, that would give us 7. And so on. Okay po. And next po, ipa-plug in na po natin siya sa formula. Thank you po sa mga nagko-comment. D is the common difference. And then, ang next po ay, simplify lang po natin. A of 37 is equal to 3 plus 37 minus 1 is we have 36. 36 times 7, that would give us 252. We added to 3. Yung pang 37 term po ay 255. Okay po. Ayan. So, ngayon naman po, before, my, before po ako mag-end ng uh, talk, uh, I would just like to share something. I-share ko lang po kung ano po ba yung mga steps na ginagawa ko sa pagte-train po ng bata. So kahapon po nung nanood po tayo, meron pong mga mga steps po na binigay na po si, uh, si Sir Mark. Mga steps and what to do, how to train and many others po. Ngayon naman po, i-share ko po yung my way, my way of how to train kapag nandiyan na po yung bata. Okay? Nakapag-select na po ng bata, nandiyan na po ng nandiyan na po yung bata. Ano po yung unang step na ginagawa ko aside sa uh, knowing each other? Ang una po ay pinapamaster ko po yung multiplication sa kanila. Pinapamaster ko po yung multiplication table sa kanila na uh, after ko lang po magbanggit ng number, may sagot na po agad. Okay po. Ang next naman po ay um, master po ng divisibility rules. Kailangan ma-master po ng bata ang divisibility divisibility rules. Pinamamaster ko po sa kanila isa-isang divisibility rules. And then after that, kinabukasan, nagkakaroon po kami ng oral recitation sa kanila lang po. Uh, nag, nag, nagbabanggit ako ng set of numbers and then sasagot sila na itong number ay divisible by 2, by 3, etc. po. Okay po. Next po ay introduce concept, terms, and vocabulary. Ino-introduce ko muna sa kanila yung concept. Ano ba yung mahihirap na concept sa math? Usually po, ang nagpapahirap po sa math, when it comes to word problem na po. Hindi po natin maintindihan ang word problem kung yung mga meaning po or mga, mga terms rather ay hindi natin alam. Usually yung mga vocabulary po. Pag hindi alam ng bata yung mga vocabulary terms, kahit alam niya po kung paano isolve yun, hindi niya po maintindihan yung word problem. So ang ginagawa ko po, ini-introduce ko muna po lahat ng concept. Wala po muna kaming word problem. Mga concept, lahat muna ng concept how to add, how to multiply, how to subtract, and how to get the volume, how to get the ganito. Mga, wala mo ng mga words, mga numbers lang po muna ang ipinapakita ko sa kanila. And then mga terms, more than, less than, uh, as many as, and then madami pa pong iba ng mga terms. And then vocabulary po, lalo na po sa geometry, may mga vocabulary po doon, scaling triangle, different kinds of triangles, different kinds of angles, ayun po. After that po, pag na-master na po nila yon. Uh, the next day po, nagkakaroon po kami ng uh, recitation po. Friendly naman po, friendly na recitation. And then, ito po, ito po yung pinakamahalaga. Kasi before po tayo mag-introduce ng mga word problem and techniques, kailangan ma-master po ng bata ang addition and subtraction. Okay po? Kailangan ma-master ng bata ang addition and subtraction. Uh, cheer, master na po nila. At sabi ng iba po, teacher, master na po nila yung addition and subtraction. Alam na po nila yan. Paano po ako mag-train para lalong mahasa or ma-enhance yung addition and subtraction skills ng bata? Ganito po ang ginagawa ko po. Example po. Nagsisimula po kami sa 10. Sinasabi ko 
ko sa kanila, uh, mag, magbibigay ako ng set of numbers and then ibibigay nila yung uh, yung number na magre-result sa 10. Uh, ang ibig ko pong sabihin ay ganito po. Pag sinabi kong 5, the number na mag a sa 5 para maging 10 ay 5. Pag sinabi ko pong 7, ang isasagot ng bata, 3. Dapat pagkabanggit ko po ng number, babanggitin din niya po agad yung, yung number para mag-match po yung sagot namin that would equal to 10. Na, uh, ganun po usually yung mga drill namin before kami mag-start. Pag sinabi kong 6, sagot ng bata 4. 3, sagot ng bata 7. 0, 10. Pag sinabi kong 10, sabit ng bata 0. Uh, zero. Pag sinabi kong 1, sabihin ng bata 9. And then after po ng 10, mumove on na po kami sa 20. Pag sinabi kong 11, sasabihin ng bata 9. Okay po? After po nun, mumove on na kami sa 30, sa 40, sa 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So 100 po kami, medyo po nagtatagal. Pero kapag paunti-unti po, drill, drills po sa bata ay uh, matututunan po nila yon. Every day po, uh, ayun po yung drill namin sa addition and subtraction. Pag sinabi ko pong, uh, let's say, 54, isasagot po ng bata ay 46 to make it 100. Paulit-ulit lang po na drill para pagdating po sa oral competition, mamaster po ng bata yung mga uh, basic facts po when it comes to addition and subtraction, lalo na po sa subtraction. Ayan po, medyo nagtatagal po kami sa subtraction. Lalo na kapag yung bata is medyo... Uh, na nahihirapan siya sa mental computation. Pero gradually po, pag pre-practice po nang pre-practice po natin yung bata, ay matututunan niya din po. Actually, uh, sa una lang naman po mahirap. Kahit saan naman po, di ba? Sa una lang mahirap. Pero pag pag nasanay ka na, pag nakapag-cope up ka na, mas mas madali na para sa iyo. Mas madali na yung mga susunod na bagay. Okay po. And then Ayan po, master po natin lalong-lalo na yung subtraction. Ano po yung ginagawa ko after ko po sa kanila introduce ito? Ang next na ginagawa ko po ay difficult problems, difficult word problems. After ko po sila ma-master ng multiplication table, after ko silang i-master ng divisibility rules, after ko silang i-master ng mga concept terms and vocabularies, and then addition and subtraction, ang next po na ina-introduce ko ay difficult word problems. Okay po. Difficult word problems po muna ang uh, ibigay po natin sa bata. Para sa una pa lang, mahirapan na sila. Joke lang. Ibig sabihin ko po, sa una pa lang, uh, matrain na po yung mind nila kung paano mag-solve ng madaling, uh, mahirap na problem. Kasi ganito po eh, parang, parang psychology lang po siya. Char, charot lang po. Ibig ko pong sabihin, and then, I'm, I'm not joking po, parang a somewhat psychology po. Kapag ang ibinigay mo sa bata is madali lang po, yung confidence po ng bata nagbubost. Alam niya, ay madali lang to, madali lang itong sagutan. Kapag madaling problem lang ibigay mo agad sa bata, medyo tumatas po yung, yung hindi naman, medyo tumatas po yung pag ano niya sarili niya na, ah, kaya ko to, madali lang pala, ganito lang pala. Pero kapag word problem, uh, what I mean, Kapag difficult word problem po ang introduce mo sa bata, unang-una pong madidevelop sa bata is yung kanyang perseverance. Magpuporsigi po siya na isolve ng isolve yung problem. Pangalawa po ay yung determination po ng bata na, na matutunan isolve yung problem. Kapag difficult word problem po ang introduce mo, may maano po siya parang ma-exercise, ma-exercise ang brain niya lalo at mag... mag uh, Ang ibig ko pong sabihin is lalo matitrain yung ano niya po, yung logical thinking. Matitrain ng maigi yung logical thinking kasi kapag kapag easy question lang po ang ibigay natin, minsan yung bata po is hindi na po nag-iisip, lalo na po yung magagaling na bata. Kapag easy question lang ang ibigay mo, hindi na po yan nag-iisip, nagbibigay na po agad sila ng sagot. Pero kapag introduce mo sa kanila is difficult word problems muna, matututo po silang mag-isip at ma-develop yung logical thinking po nila. Okay po? Yan. So after po ng difficult word problems, ini-introduce ko na po yung average word problems. Pag na-develop po ng bata yung confidence niya sa mga difficult problems, mas madali na po sa kanya ang average word problems and syempre po, yung mga 
easy word problem. So kapag na-develop na po natin sa bata, yung confidence niya po sa pagsosolve ng mga uh, difficult word problem, mas madali na po sa kanya ang mag-solve ng average word problem and easy word problem po. Ayan po. po at, and ayan po, same with uh, end ko po kahapon. The more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in war. So kapag ang bata po is na-train nyo po ng, uh, na-train nyo po, and then, and then po ay, uh, nag-exert po tayo ng effort, during the competition po, hindi na po mahihirapan ng bata. Okay po? Actually, ako po, share ko lang po, summer pa lang po, or early by June, nagtitrain na po kami, nagtitrain na po kami ng, ng bata. Ayan, thank you po sa lahat ng uh, nanunood. Thank you po. I hope you learn something po. And, gusto ko lang po i-share sa inyo yung uh, uh, quotation po na lagi pong binabanggit sa amin ng aming masipag po na supervisor po ng Def Ed Desmarinas, si Ma'am Karyaga po. Hi Ma'am. And then, ito po yung lagi niya pong sinasabi sa amin na uh, ang bata po ay, I mean, ang ibig niya pong sabihin is challenge but never pressure. It's a challenge po natin ang bata pero wag po natin ipipressure. Okay po. Same with sa mga nagtitrain po. Macha-challenge po tayo, pero wag po tayong mape-pressure. Okay. Nawala po yung letter P sa name ni Philip Andrew. Ayan po. Uh, thank you everyone po. If you have any question po, sa, sa last na slide ko po, nandun po yung email ad ko po. So you can visit po my page. Ito po yung page ko. Matwizard page. And then, Ito naman po yung YouTube channel ko. Ayan, bago pa lang po ako sa YouTube channel. Ayan, makikita niyo po sa nakasulat sa sa banner ko po. Researcher. Ayan, I do research din po. Gumagawa din po ako ng mga research. Nakapag-present na din po ako ng isang international research. And then, ayan, humble ma trainer and coach po. Ayan, thank you everyone. If you have any question po, Oops, nawala yung slide. Wait, ipapakita ko po yung email ad ko po. Ayan po, if you have any question, naka-flash po dyan yung email ad ko. And then, para po sa nagdami pong nag-chat para sa presentation ko po, okay, yung presentation ko po ay i-upload po ni Teacher Gon sa page po ng Matwis, ah, uh, math teaching resources po. Ipopost niya po later kung saan po yun makikita. Ipopost ko rin po itong presentation po na ito. Thank you po. Thank you everyone. I hope you learned something. Ako po pala si Ma'am Melissa Lane A. Ladisla from Desmarinas, Cavite. Teacher Gon. Thank you po sa mga nagko-comment. Ayan. Good morning po. Ay, Ma'am Mel, maraming salamat sa iyong, ano, sa iyong um, package na delivery na yung discussion. Napagaling pa na, Ma'am Mel. Um, don't forget po, Ma'am Ma Mel, pa-share nga rin po din ang inyong, ano, ang inyong YouTube channel. Yan po. Uh, don't forget po to subscribe kay Ma'am Mel kasi po um, marami na po tayong YouTubers na marami na po teachers kayo na gumagawa ng, ng kanilang mga YouTube, cha YouTube channel. Mas maganda po na mas marami ang ating options para makamilit po tayo ng mas magandang gamitin ng mga videos. And I highly recommend yung YouTube channel po ni Ma'am. I support her YouTube channel, Math Research po. And also meron din po siyang Facebook page. Same with Math Research din po yung pangalan po. And Mamel, again, maraming salamat po. May Sir. inadagdik po ba kayo, Mamel? Discussion. Thank you po. Okay. Thank 
Sa lahat po naman na nanonood, I hope na na-appreciate na po yung discussion natin. And alam po namin na alam po namin na no, karamihan po ng ating mga viewers ngayon ay equipped na in terms of math competition problems. Kung titignan po natin kanina yung ating, ano, yung ating live comments, uh, ang bilis ng ating mga participants kasi kaka-flash lang ng mismong problem, meron agad sagot. Okay? That's good. That's good to see po kasi napagaling po. Again, Mamel, I know na meron mo pang pupuntahan ngayon. Alis ka na ba, Mamel? Hindi pa naman. Sige po, later, later. Thank you, Mamel. Bye, Mamel. Thank you po. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So, for, for next presenter naman po, again, nakilala niyo na po siya kahapon, he discuss or give you some tips on how to coach Uh, Karoon tayo ngayon ng ano ah, ng may ng connection. Uh, I hope na may improve na yung internet sa Pilipinas kasi lalo na ngayong nakaroon tayo ng uh, online learning. So, again, without further ado, let me introduce Mr. Mark Anthony I. Kagalitan from Dasmarinas, Cavite. She will be do, uh, he will be doing grade 5 and grade 6 math problems. Hello. Hi, sir. Ready Hi, na, sir? Ed. Ako na? Yes, sir. Kayo na po. Ready na po? Okay na, okay na. Yes, sir. Sige. Thank you. So, welcome po once again sa mga uh, live viewers natin. This morning, I'll be sharing uh yeah, uh, our sample math questions. Yeah. Teka lang. So, ayan po ang sample math questions for grade 5. Sabi nga ni Ma'am Mel kanina. Ayan. So, first, I would like to show you yung meme, di ba? Uso ngayon ang mga meme sa internet. Mabilis siya sa math. Then what's 1,750 times 1,920? May sagot na kagad siya, 230. Oh. Pero hindi yun close. It's not even close. Pero mabilis. May sagot. Mabilis. Sa, com sa ka mga competition, may it's speed and accuracy. Di ba? 200, may sagot nga siya, hindi naman tama. May inaakala siyang tamang sagot, pero hindi pala yun. Um, uh, mabilis nga, hindi naman tama. So, mali rin. Okay? Share ko lang. So, uh, first problem, uh, I would like to I would like to give to you my first problem. Ayan, sample. So, eto na. How many blocks are needed to compute? Sir Gon, pa, pakita nga ng comments. Kung hindi ko makita yung mga comments, paano po yun? Nakikita. Yung gaya nung kahapon, sa aking ano. So, how many blocks are needed to complete? Uh, full to sa right corner. Right corner. Ah, ayun. Wow, mabilis nga. Okay, good morning. Good morning po. Ang bilis. May sagot na kagad. Wow. Oo nga, no? So, 
initially, akala ng mga um, uh, mga nagsosolve nito, uh, yung mga kulang lang na blocks ang kailangan i-fill out, di ba? Hindi na napansin na yung nasa side ng cube ay ano lang, apat. Apat lang, na stacks lang, oh. one, two, three, four. It means, four by five siya dapat. Ah, four by five lang siya. Hindi siya five by five by five, di ba? O, oh, five by, hmm, kulang pa ng isa, di ba? Kaya dapat siya ay maging 5 by 5 by 5 para maging buong cube. Ito ay 4 by 4 by 5 lang. So, let's see. May nagsagot 20. 20 daw. 20. Oh, 20. Wow. 20. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, mabilis nga, 20. But, Dadagdagan pa ng isang patong. Correct. Dadagdagan pa ng isang patong. Okay. 20 plus 25. 25. So, good morning. Good morning to all our viewers. May nagsagot 20. Don't be deceived by what you answer. Ay, but by what you see. 20. Oh, mo. It should be, hello, hello po lah sa lahat. How many blocks? 45. 45 po. Thank, congratulations sa mga nagsagot ng 45. Why is it to, not 20? Dadagdagan pa daw ng isa pang pato. Oo na, 5 by 5. Kaya 20, yung mga nagsagot ng 20, dagdagan nyo pa po ng isa pa na 5 by 5. Na 25. So, 45 po ang sagot. Okay? O, oh, mabilis nga. 20. Ini, unang tingin mo agad. 20. Yung kasi yun yung mga butal-butal-butal doon. So, kailangan pa ng isa pa. Okay? So, Thank you po sa nagsagot ng 45. Next. Yan. Question number 2 na tayo. I'll give you 1 minute para mag-solve. Dami naman. So, we'll have question number 2. In a book exhibit, there were 50% more math books sold than science books. If a total of 360 math and science books were sold in a day, how many math books were sold? So, we'll be solving this number two question. In a book exhibit, there were 50% more math book sold. How many many math books were sold? Okay. We have various answers. Oh, we have, okay, 240 daw. Most, 240? Let's see. Wow, 240? Wow. How many uh, science books kaya? Oh, we have... Oh, 204, majority, 240 po ang nakikita kong sagot. So, 
Ilan po ang science books? 120. Ganon. Oh. So, 180. Not, not sure. Wow. 240 po talaga. 50% more. Ah. Ah, yun. May nakita akong tamang sagot. Oh. Ha, math books po ha, math books ang hinahanap, math books. We are Shout out sa mga uh, shout out kay Ma'am Helen. Ay, sorry. Ayun, Ma'am Helen and Ma'am Gladys Cristobal. Nakita ko yung kanilang mga sagot. 270. Oh. So Let's see, let's see kung yung 240 and 100, there were uh, 50% more math books sold. So, kung 240 yun, meaning, ang sagot mo sa the, the science books will be 120. Is that 50% more? I, I think it's... Uh, 100% more. Di ba? Kung 240 and 120, 240 math books, it is 50% more than the 120. Mm. Is it 50%? Baka 100%. Di ba? Oh. So let's see the correct answer sa ating uh, given how many math books were sold eh to may nagsasagot more than 360 uh, ang total lang po the, the total number of math and science books were that were sold is 360 total na, that's the total already so the answer should be less than 360 okay we'll see the correct answer uh, the solution here, yan. Uh, may algebra tayo. It's 50%. It should be 216. So, 216 math books and 144 science books. Oh. 270 and 90? Ah, I'm so sorry. Much appreciated. Oh, oh common. Oh, medyo, oh. Yeah. 270 and 90? It should be 216. 50%. Yan. Nakita na nila ang tamang sagot. So, medyo na ano tayo sa 240 and 120, 270 and uh, 90, 216. The total number of math books sold should be 216 po. Okay? So, meron pa rin, uh, uh, yes, 216. And 144. Medyo nag, uh, ano na yung ating, we are using now our brain cells for uh, answering this math uh, problem. Diba? I think it's 216 and 144. 216 math books and 144 science books. We add, let us make uh, X the, uh, the, the, the number for the science books, it is 50% more. So it's the math is 1.5x. You add that, it will, uh, the answer will be 360. And 2.5x equals 360. Divide both sides by 2.5. You'll get 144 science books. Half, uh, half of 144 for the 
MacBook 72, you add that 144 plus 72, you'll get 260. Okay? How many back MacBooks were sold? So, yan. We are entitled to our uh, own opinion. Uh, I'll 50%, you'll just add... Uh, Uh, may algebra na po. Oh. Yeah. So, wala po bang ibang approach for this problem? Yes, 216. Okay? I will move now to si picture ko na po ang bahala for the next, uh, for the other approach aside from algebra. Diba, teacher gone? Next. Okay, we'll move to geometry. This is a very easy question. Triangle DEF is an isosceles triangle. If its perimeter is 64 centimeters and each leg is 4 centimeters shorter than the base, find the length of each leg and the base. So, madali lang, kaya kagad ito sagutan. So, triangle DEF. Amen. So, good morning po to all our viewers. 10 seconds. Kaya na, kaya, kaya ito. Yes, other approaches can use a black model approach. So, saan nakuha yung 1.5? So, si... Yan. Marami. Mm. Malabo po yung naka-display. Triangle DEF is, is an isosceles triangle if its perimeter is 64. Let's see. Kung uh, kaya nang isolve. So we have to, the base. We're looking for the length of leg, the le each leg, and the base of the isosceles triangle. Yes. Find the length. May nagsasagot na po. Congratulations. So, and let us uh, make N our base and each leg N minus 4. Kasi 4 centimeter shorter than the base. So, we add the base and the two legs, then equate that to 64. That's the perimeter. So, we have N plus N plus N ah, plus N plus N minus 4 plus N minus 4 equals 64. So, 72. We, ha we got 72 We added 64 plus 8, 72 ang sagot. Then we divide by 3. So 20, 74 divided by 3, 24. So we have, we come up with the answer, 24. Then we subtract 4, it's less than, so 20. 24, 20. 24 less 20, uh, less 4 is 20 centimeters. So congratulations po sa mga nakasagot. So for those who answered 24 centimeters and 20 centimeters. Okay? 24 and 20. Congratulations sa mga nakasol. Next, question number four. What number divided by one-third will produce 315? 15 seconds. Kaya, what number divided by one-third will produce 315? Okay. 
Let's see sa mga comments for 15 seconds or 30 seconds. Okay, we have uh, answers, barring, various answers sa mga comments. It's a battle between 945 and 105. Oh. Okay, 105 daw. Yung iba, yung iba, 945. Let's see. Oh. Number when divided by one third. Oh. So, 945. Let's see. 945. I have seen 945 and 105. So, may nagsagot. It's 315 times... Uh, oh. Okay. Let's see. We have various... We are... Ano? Okay. May nagsasa ng uh, 105 merong 945 medyo ang daming nagcha-chat nagko-comments let's see oh 945 okay okay 315 mm, 900 medyo ano to mm. let's see Let's see kung ano nga ba ang tamang sagot. I'm uh, looking at your... Oh, na... oh, parang complex. So, medyo gumagana na ang brain cells natin. Oh. Unang tick. Our brain cells are working already. Let's see. It's... Uh, main... Those who are answering... Oh, oh, 945, 105. Hmm... Oh. Congratulations. Let's see. Oh, may... Sorry, sir. Oh, may nagbabago na ng sagot. Okay, 100. Oh. Meron pa rin 945. Medyo, ano to, di ba? Yun know, mga, ano, these are the medyo, ano, kailangan. Oh, what? 105, sure answer. Sure na daw siya. Okay. 945 daw. Oh. So, is that your final answer? Mga ganon. Pamay na lang po. Pagka ano. Oh. Yes. I'll give you the, the correct answer already. The correct answer is... May number... The number divided by one-third is equal to 315. So, we, will, should, we should multiply one-third by 315 to get the answer. It's 100. Ay, final answer. Okay po. 315 times one-third is 100. Five. Med Sir, medyo tricky. Minultiply ko kagad. Na it's 900, 315 times 3. Re reciprocal. Oh. So, 105, not 945. Okay? So, sa mga sumagot ng 105, congratulations to all our Ah, meron pa rin sure sa 945. Okay. Congratulations. Next problem, number five. Yan. Number five na tayo. To cut a log into two equal parts, a logger had to pay 100 pesos. If a log is to be cut into six parts, how many... Uh, sorry, how much should the logger pay? I repeat, to cut a log into two equal parts, a logger had to pay 100 pesos. 
if a log is to be cut into six parts, how much should the logger pay? Again. Let's see. Sa mga comments. There are there are some answering already. Oh, we have uh, various answers. Yeah, sa comments, three hundred pesos, five hundred pesos. Okay, so it's a battle between three hundred pesos. Oh, madame, there are many answering. 300 pesos. Okay. Sir, oh, by ratio and proportion. Somebody uh, commented by ratio and proportion daw. Okay. Sir, bakit ganito? Mga, why, should, why are the problems like this? Very tricky. Sabi ko naman sa inyo, uh, we have, ano, we, uh, we are answering uh, fast. Di ba? Oh, let's see. 300 pesos daw for ratio and proportion. Mm. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay. To cut a log into two equal parts, a logger had to pay 100 pesos. If six parts. Oh. Okay. Tingnan natin ang... Uh, Okay, may nagsas there there's somebody answering 500 pesos, 300 pesos, 700 pesos. Final answer? Oh, 300 300. 300 po talaga. May sure may ano, with conviction. 300 pesos. Okay, may 300 daw. Let's see. Oh. Medyo Kailangan nating oh, 300. Okay. So, yes. To, okay, I will show the answer already. To be able to, uh, to cut into six parts, we need how many cuts? So that we can uh, cut a log into six parts. We, we will have to cut it. We should, we will have uh, five cuts. Kaya five cuts times 100 pesos, it's 500 pesos. Diba? There's a log. You will cut it into six parts. You need to cut five times. Okay? So, it should be yung mga those who had answered uh, 300 pesos, uh, there's uh, meaning you ha need three cuts. So, meron kang log, you will cut you will cut it three times, one, two, and three. So, you will only have uh, how many pieces? Diba? Please... Yeah. May nasa, it's in the comment already. By ratio and proportion. Limang hati. Limang hati. Paano ba to i-explain no, sa Tagalog? Limang hati. Oh. Limang hati. Ang isang hati ay 100 pesos. Kaya 500 pesos. Oh. Komplikado ba? Five cuts equals 300. May not 300. Oh. It should be. Drawing. Oh, oh. Try nyo na lang po i-draw yung log. Oh, para makita natin. Diba? Makita ninyo na ito ay 500 
pesos. Limang cuts nga. Ha! Very tricky. Wow! May nagko-comment. Tricky daw po. Well, ganun talaga para ma... That's the way to, ano, to... to For your brain cells to work. Para sinabi na, sabi na kanina, na hindi porket mabilis, eh tama na agad. Okay po ba yan? Okay. We'll move now to uh, question number six. Okay. So ito, hindi na to tricky, madali lang ito. It is very easy question. The average of five consecutive integers is 20. What is the sum of the largest and the smallest of these integers? So this is a very easy question. The average of five consecutive integers is 20. What is the sum of the largest and smallest of these integers? Okay. Let's see. So, we'll see the correct answer. So, very well explained. <laughs> okay. Sure. Let's see. 40. Oh, madali lang po. This is a very easy question. If we, uh, to solve this, the average is 20. There are five, meaning 20 is the third integer. It's the middle number. So, we just subtract 2 to get from 20. The smallest, to get the smallest number, it's 20 minus 2. It's 18. To get the largest, 20 plus 2. That's the 22 is the answer. You add 18 and 22, you'll get 40. Okay? Congratulations. 18 plus 22 to all the... To, to all who answered 40, congratulations. That's the sum and, yeah. The sum is 40. Congratulations po for those who answered 40. The two numbers, the smallest is 18 and the largest is 22. So when we say the average uh, of five consecutive, the middle, that's the middle number, yung 20, that's the third integer. So subtract 2 and add 2, you'll get the smallest and the largest. Okay po? So it's very easy question. Congrats. The, the numbers are 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So add the smallest, which is 18, and the largest, which is 22, you'll get 40. Congratulations to all who answered 40. Okay, question number Seven. Okay. What is the smallest four-digit whole number divisible by nine? With divisibility, oh, which ha which what which has two even and two odd digits. Smallest four-digit whole number divisible by nine, which has two even and two odd digits. Let's see. Sa comment section. What is the smallest four-digit whole number? It should be divisible by nine. So, So, somebody commented already? Two even and two odd digits. It has two even and two odd digits. 
Okay, we are, we are uh, I am still uh, waiting for I some answers. Feeling ko labanan ito ng mga trainers. <laughs> Parang online ano lang, di ba? Pagka hinanap ng estudyante mo, nag, nakita ng estudyante mo, nag-comment ka ng mali. Tingnan natin. It should have two even and two odd digits. And it should be divisible by nine. Take note. It should be divisible by nine. One thousand. Oh, yeah. Smallest. We're looking for the smallest. Divisible by nine. Four did smallest. Four digit. Divisible by nine. And has two even. And two odd digits. Smallest, four digit, divisible by nine, and it has two even and two odd digits. Is this online quiz? Hindi. <laughs> okay. Smallest. If, uh, make sure na ito ay smallest, ito ay four digit, Ito ay whole number. Ayan. So, divisible by 9. Sabi nga ni Ma'am Mel kanina. Divisibility rules. Oh. Okay. It's time's up. Let's see if you got the correct answer. Let's see. I'll be posting the correct answer. It's 1,089. Congratulations to those who answered 1,089. Let's see. It's Is it four-digit whole number? Yes, it's a four-digit whole number. Is it divisible by nine? Let's add one plus zero plus eight plus nine. Eighteen. The sum is eighteen and eighteen is divisible by nine. It has two even. Even, two even. What are the two even numbers? Ah, na nandun. It's zero and eight. Two. Oh. And has two odd digits. Odd, one and nine. Okay? So, the correct answer is 1,089. Is zero odd? Ah, is zero even? Yes, zero is an even number. So look, congratulations to those who answered 1,089. Yes, correct. May naka-correct. Congratulations. Okay, what is the... We'll move to the next uh, question. What is the smallest four-digit prime number? Okay, what is the smallest four-digit prime number? Why am I, why am I uh, reiterating prime numbers? Kasi may naniniwala pang uh, one daw ay prime number. Lo? Nada, mm, may, cons, may mga estudyante ako. May, I have pupils who have, who say, have pupils who say uh, one daw is prime. Mm, diba? What is the smallest four-digit prime number? Oh, we have answers. 1,001. 1,011. 1,008. Smallest prime. We're talking about prime number. Okay. 1,001. 1,002. Ooh, one thousand first, one thousand one. Oh, one thousand. Sorry, one thousand. If your answer is one thousand, it's not prime. Obviously, it's a composite number. Composite. Oh, one thousand one. They are 
Nag check pa siguro yung iba na ano uh, divisibility. Oh, 1000. Nag-check pa siguro sila. Ano kaya ang mga factors nun? Baka yung iba, nag-iisip muna kung bago mag-comment, di ba? Ay, sir. Ayan. Let's see. 1,003. I have seen 1,003. 1,011. I don't think so. Kasi when we add 1, 1, 1, that's already 1,011 is divisible by 3 by divisibility rules, sabi nga ni Ma'am Mel. You add the digits sa 1,011. Okay, let's see. Well, okay, 1,000. Yo, may nagsagot? 1,011 is not uh, <laughs> prime because it's divisible by 3. Of you. Uh, okay. Let's see. 1,001. Baka may ano. May, may nag-check, nagtitingin. Tingnan ko nga muna sa comment section, baka yung madami na lang, yung majority na lang ang, uh, ano ko, de joke lang po, teachers. Yan. Magandang, magandang tingnan yung mga nasa comment section kasi iba-iba eh, di ba? We have various answers doon sa, ano, sa comment section. 1,003, 1,013. Somebody answered 1,007. Ah. So, let's check. Sabi nga kanina sa unang slide ko, in my first slide, uh, the answer is fast, but is it correct? Speed and accuracy. Oh, somebody answered uh, 1,001 daw is not the smallest because it's divisible by 11. So, let's see. The correct answer uh, is 1,009. 1,009. So, it's not 1,001. These are the factors of 1,001. It's not 1,003. It's, uh, it has... Uh, 17 times 59 is 1,003. 1,003 is a product of two prime numbers also. 17 and 59. So 1,007, 19 times 53 is 1,007. It's 1,009. Okay? We're looking for the smallest, smallest four-digit prime number. Congratulations! To those who answered, uh, 1,009. Okay? Uh, give yourself a big round of applause. Congratulations. Next, we, we now move to question number nine. How many two-digit prime numbers have a unit's digit of one? How many two-digit prime numbers have a unit's digit of one? Mapapa, sana all ka na lang. Sana all tama. How many two-digit prime numbers have a unit's digit of one? Let's see. Prime num Two-digit prime numbers? Oh. Um, let's wait, wait po muna for the comments to be <laughs> to be posted. Uh -huh. Okay. How many two-digit prime numbers have a unit's digit of one? Na natin. Makikinig na, hindi na daw magpo-post yung iba makikinig na lang. So magtitingin na lang sa comments. Ano? So, we have various answers, some answers. Four, six, five. Ano, ano kaya yun? Units digit of one. 
when we say units digit, it is in the ones place. Units digit. Okay? Units digit of one. Okay? Ano-ano kaya yun? Okay. Share na, share na. Share mo lang. Share ko na ang... Uh, Two digit, two digit prime numbers, ha? Two digit prime numbers. Ilang two digit prime numbers have a units digit of one. Let's see. The correct answer. The correct answer is five. It is 11, 31, 41, 61, and 71. So we have uh, five prime numbers which has a unit which have a units digit of 1 11 31 41 61 and 71 okay there are 5 the correct answer is 5 okay congratulations to those who answered Sir, paano po yung solution? Ayun na po, ili, bibigay mo lang yung numbers. 11, 31, 41, 61, and... Eh, sir, 51 po. How about 51? 51 is divisible by 3. Sir, 91. 91 is divisible by 7. Oh. Ah! I see. Oh. Oo nga pala, 21 is composite. Uh, 81 is composite. 91. Oh. Okay, let's see. Question, question number. Mapapa oh, oo nga pala, 51 is not prime. 91 is not prime. Okay, let's see. Question number 10. Ayan. The price of a bag is reduced by 20%. In order to restore the reduced price to the original value, how much must the reduced price be increased? The price of a bag is reduced by 20%. In order to restore the, res the, the reduced price to the original value, how much must be the reduced price but be increased? Okay, let's see. Sa ating mga... By how much? Say, please. Uh, challenging, huh? A comment, it's... Challenging daw. No. Wait. I see. Uh. Oh. May hindi makamove on sa 17 and 19. As I have said a while ago, the one should be in units digit. Yung 17 and... <laughs> Yung 17 and 19, ang 1 po nila ay nasa 10th digit. Okay? So, let's see. Oh. So, uh, let's see. Kung may, uh, naghihintay lang po ako ng, uh, okay. Most, uh, okay. Sir, Ni-reduce by 20% eh. eh. Para bumalik sa dating presyo. Increase na rin natin ang 20%. O di ba? Is, is that the way? Ganun ba yun? Na-discount ng 20%? Dagdag mo lang yung 20% ulit? May ganun. Di ba? May so may nagsasagot na Yeah. Meron pa rin uh, 
nagsasagot na. So, let's see. Let's see if your answer is correct. Nagsasagot silang, majority of the commenters are answered 25%. Let's see. Be increased. Okay, be increased. You should add. So, yan. So, let's see. Halimbawa, 100, we have 100 pesos. The original price is 100 pesos. It is re reduced by 20%. So the price now is 80 pesos. So in order to make it to, in order to restore to 100 pesos, for example, the price now is 80, yung ibabalik natin sa 100 pesos, Ilan ang i-increase natin? Diba? It should be, we need 20 pesos pa to, to add to the original, uh, to the price na 80 pesos. So, yung 20 pesos, that is 25% of 80. So, that, that should be added. So, it should be 25%. O kaya, 10 pesos na lang. It, it, it. So, 25% po. It should be increased by 25%. Yes. 0 0.8 by 25%. Multiplied by 25%. That is the, num the amount to be added to the... Uh, the, the reduced price. Okay. Let's see. Question number 11. Mm, prime numbers na naman. How many whole numbers less than 10 are not prime? Okay, let's move to question number 11. How many whole numbers less than 10 are not prime? See? Good morning. Let's wait for the comments. How many whole numbers? Less, oh, binabaan ko na ha. Less than 10 are not prime. How many whole numbers? Less than 10 are not prime. Let's wait for the oh, whole numbers. We are looking for whole, whole numbers. It should be less than 10. Ayan na, we have various answers already. But ang nakalagay dito, majority are 4 down. Let's see. Oh, let's, let's check later on. Padamihin ko lang po yung comments. Ayan na, nag, nag, nagko-comments na sila. Oh, there are 4. four majority are answering 4. Let's see. Majority daw, I, uh, it's, oh, bis, ang bilis, ang dami. Ah. Majority are answering four. Ah. Some answered, it's one, three, five, and seven. Not prime nga po. Not prime. Okay. Oh. Not prime. How many whole numbers less than? <laughs> Not prime. Let's see. Okay. Uh, not prime. Ano kaya yung mga... Um, so, let's see kung tama ang inyong sagot. So, time's up. Uh, five po, including zero. Oh, five daw. Um, four, six, eight, nine, zero. Uh, let's see. Five po, sagot. Six, four, ganyan. Oh. 
hindi kasama ang 10. Oh yes, yes, hindi po kasama ang 10 talaga kasi less than se less than 10. Okay? So, let's see. There are some are answering four only. Okay. Kasama ba ang zero? Kasama ba ka? Is zero a whole number? Let's, oh, oh. Not prime, may two. Not prime, ha? Uh, oh. Is zero a whole number? Whole number, whole? Let's see. Okay. So, thank you for your uh, posting your answers. So, let's check. Let's check. <laughs> The question number 11. Let's look at the answer. The correct answer is 6. 6 four. Congratulations to those who answered 6. Those, number, those numbers are 0, 1, 4, 6, 8, and 9. Okay. Zero, one, four, six, eight, and nine. Yes, sir. Four, six, eight, nine. Yun lang po ah. Where? Yun lang po ang nasa isip ko. So one is in, is not prime. So one is included. Zero is a whole number. Na not prime then, ba? It's neither prime nor composite. So. Is one considered prime? No, it's not prime. <laughs> one is neither prime nor composite. Congratulations to those who answered six. Oh, one and zero. Yes, one and zero uh, are included. So the correct answer is six. Okay. Last question. Last question for the for my talk. Okay. Question number 12. What digit can be used to replace N? Okay. Last na po ito. Okay. So, sabi nga ng isang commenter, kailangan daw i-comprehend. Yes, comprehension, it is very needed, very much needed during uh, competitions. We need to comprehend really the questions. So, let's see. What number? What uh, digit can be used to replace N. I'll uh, give you enough time so to answer, to post your comments, uh, to, to, po to comment your answers. Jan. Let's see. Some are answering four, five, six. Still watching. Sana may natutunan kayo. Mm -hmm. We are looking for a digit N. We are... Okay. Ano kayang, uh, paano kaya nila sasagot? Paano? Yeah, yung mga gano'n, ano. So, let's see. Ano kaya ang pwedeng ipalit sa number? I, I think nakuha na nung iba na I think nakukuha na nung ibang uh, viewers natin ang uh, sagot. Paano Ang tanong, paano? May nag... Pa 
how did you come up with the how did you come up with the with your answers nag may nagdadasal na sana po correct daw <laughs> sana po correct na siya let's see let's see i'll give you the correct answer okay the correct answer is five five po bakit po five uh, just add makikita nyo five po may, may nagsagot addition kayo na po mag visualize kung saan po yung addition okay uh, addition uh, may nagko-comment addition tingnan nyo po kung saan yung addition yes tama congratulations to all those who answered five Addition po, hanapin, dear teachers, kung saan po yung addition. Add lang po yung digit, sabi. Okay? So, thank you very much. That ends. Uh, thank you. Uh, these are some, pro, ano, wala po kong share na na, inter, uh, na Facebook page o YouTube channel. Hindi po ako nag, hindi po ako nag, YouTube, ano, na, ako po ay viewer lang, viewer, ayan, si Ma'am Mel kanina yung nag-train ay kasama kong coach sa, ano, sa division namin, mas lamang po siya sa akin, mas expert po ang level ni Ma'am Mel compared sa akin. Kung mapapansin niyo po yung uh, uh, YouTube channel or Facebook page ni Ma'am Mel, yung Matt Wizard, may nakalagay po doon, humble, Matt trainer, pinariringgan niya po kasi ako na ako po kasi ay hindi humble. Mayabang po ako eh, kaya for sure ako yung pinatatamaan niya doon. Congratulations. Okay, thank you very much. Sir Gon, tapos na po ako sa aking presentation. Sana po may natutunan kayo sa aking... Totoo ako. Sa, sa tricks, <laughs> sa mga tricky questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sir, go na po. Okay. Hi, sir. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Ito ako bigla to sa ano, sa share niyo. Okay. Si sir po pala ay wala po siyang YouTube channel and wala po siyang Facebook page. Baka pwede po natin siyang ma-post, ano, ma, ma, ano, ma na mag-create ang sarili niya and do the service. <laughs> Shy type si sir talaga eh. Ito yung expertise yun. Okay. Uh, by the way, maraming salamat pa rin talaga sir sa inyong time sa pag-share ng inyo. Okay. Uh, sir, ay nag-focus. Yan po. Si sir ay nag-focus sa ating ano sa ating uh, controversial math problem sa under ng grade 6 and grade 5. Kasi yan sa mga lodi natin. Again, maraming salamat po sir Mark Anthony ay kagalitan from Dasmarinas Cavite. Uh, isa sa mga lodi ng Dasmarinas. Again sir, more power. Salamat po sa inyong sharing. Sa mga okay. viewers po natin, Okay, sir. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Sa mga viewers po natin, um, I know na ano po, um, medyo long pasok po tayo sa ating time, pero tuloy lang po natin because maraming po na-excite sa ating live comments. Nakikita ko na active yung ating participation. Now, before I start, um, this Webinar is intended for elementary math teachers. Originally, share ko lang po, I am a grade 9 math teacher and coach po ko ng high school math competition. To be specific, uh, I already handled grade 8 and grade 9. Eh, sir, ang tanong dito, bakit ka engage sa elementary math competition? Share ko lang po, uh, last year, uh, last February, uh, one of is sa mga parents ng mga bata ng grade 6 ay kinuha ko bilang tutor. Nakilala lang nila ako sa aking Facebook page na math, uh, math teacher gone. And then kinunta ko ng parent kasi gusto niya rin ipatutor yung kanyang anak sa MTAP. Uh, Minention ko na po yung MTAP. And yung bata, yung, yung bata pong iyon is from Agayan de Oro. Uh, starting last week of February until 
Now, hanggang ngayong mga panahon po ito, we are doing our online tutorial sa MTAP lang po. Kasi po yung bata po last year, ang goal po na ngayon ng parent is makapasok yung bata sa division finals. Last year kasi hindi po siya na pinalad na makapasok. Okay? Um, Tawag dito, ano po yun, not bad po yung kanyang score. As nasabi po sa akin ng kanyang parent, yung score niya po sa elimination round is, is 30. So not bad po. Ba't ko po sinishare yun? Uh, advice ko lang po, sa mga parents or may parents naman dito na nanonood at sa mga coaches natin, uh, try to engage your par uh, the parents of your uh, trainees. Kasi po, malaking bagay po yung kanilang suporta. Yan po. Okay? So, in my presentation po, napakasimple lang po ng aking ano, ang cover ko lang po is grade 6. Okay, let's start. Let me share my screen to you. Again, I am Mr. Eduardo C. Gonzaga Jr. from San Pedro Laguna, a grade and math teacher. And try po natin, try ko po mag-share sa inyo ng ilan sa mga methods na natutunan ko sa grade 6 mathematics. So basically, tandaan po ha, basic lang po ito yung mga bibigay ko sa inyo. Pero I hope na makatulong po sa inyo. So let's have the first problem. Here's the problem. How many ten thousands are there in three hundred fifty nine million one hundred ninety thousand five hundred fifty seven? Okay. Again, how many ten thousands are there in three hundred fifty nine million one hundred ninety thousand five hundred fifty seven? Okay. Hintayin po natin yung mga sagot. Okay. So, what is the answer kaya? How many ten thousands? Kaya ako po ito sinishare kasi nung nag-start po kami ng discussion ng aming ano, tutorial, ay iba pa yung sulu. Uh, may, sulu may sagot po yung bata, pero um, ito po kasi, kalimitan na malabas sa uh, first part ng elimination round or first part ng easy round ng division orals. So, Ang target po natin ngayon is makakita tayo ng mas mabilis, mas mabilis technique. So, una po, again, how many ten thousands are there in 359,190,557? So, ang technique po rito, una, ang hinihingi po ay ten thousands. Yan po. Alam po natin, sa ten thousand po natin, meron po tayong how many zeros? Meron po tayong one, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So, para po mas mabilis natin makuha, yung sagot po natin, without dividing it by 10,000 pa, kasi sayang po yung panahon, since meron po tayong 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, i-cancel lang po natin yung apat na digits sa dulo. And then, yung remaining numbers, yun ang pinsagot natin. Therefore, in this problem, tama po, marami po nakakuha ng tamang sagot, the correct answer is 35,990. Yan po yung bilang ng 10,000 inside 359,190,557. So kahit ano po number, pwede po gawin yan. Okay, thank you sa mga uh, nagsasagot. Active yung ating ano. Okay, uh, sa ating po ano, may question po. Uh, can we have your PowerPoint? Um, ito po, later po, ipapakita po namin sa inyo yung Facebook group po namin na kung saan doon po namin i-upload yung aming mga presentations including Sir Ma'am Mel's presentation and Sir Mark's presentation po. So, okay. So, I hope na natutunan niyo po instead of dividing it by 10,000, itanggalin na lang po natin yung last four digits because 10,000 has four zeros. Okay? So, I hope natutunan niyo po. Let's move on to item number two. Ito. basic another basic ano, problem. What is a GCF of 54 and 72? Yan. Nice. Again, what is the greatest common factor of 54 and 72? Okay, I'll be giving you 
one minute. I think one minute kaya na to answer this problem. Let's see kung ano pa yung inyong magiging sagot. And kung masasagutan niyo po, can you please share your way kung paano siya gawin? You can comment down below your answer and pwede niyo rin pong ilagay yung inyong solution. Wow, nine. The answer is nine. Twenty seven. The other live streamers answered eighteen. So we have three possible answers: nine, eighteen, and twenty-seven. Kaso, anong ba yung tamang sagot? Okay. Okay, may mga eighteen. And then, okay. So I hope we can actually reveal the solution. Natin. Um, conventionally. Ito yung, way na, ito yung conventional way on how to do this because we are asked what is the GCF or greatest common factor between uh, of 54 and 72. So basically, we need to do or to list down all the factors of 54 and 72. Diba? Tama po ba ako? Yes, that is correct. We, uh, we can list down the number of fac the factors of 54 and 72 and then we can easily identify what is the GCF. Right now, I'll be sharing another way po kung paano siya solve. Pero yung iba sa inyo rito, for sure, alam na nila ito. Okay? Una, we can use prime factorization. Yung 54 po, find the prime factors of the two numbers. We can, yes, very good, meron ng ganap yun, no? We can use prime factorization and listing method. Very good po. So, let's have 54. The prime factors of 54 are 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. And then uh, expressing it exponentially, we will get, uh, we can have it as 2 times 3 raised to 3. Yan. And then another factor, or the prime factors of 72 is that we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And then if you want to do it, or express it exponentially, you can have it as 2 raised to 3 and 3 raised to 2. So, paano ba natin kukunin yung sagot dito? Or paano ba natin makukuha yung, ano, yung uh, greatest common factor in this kind of way? Again, I'm not saying na um, mas mabilis to compared sa, ano, sa pag-list down ng greatest common fa ng factors ng bawat number. Kasi po, depende po sa bata yan. Ang, kaya ko po pinapakita ito para magkaroon po tayong options ng mga strategy kung paano natin ibibigay sa ating mga sudyante. And then, nasa kanila nila kung ano yung mas effective na way. So, to find the prime, to find the prime factors po, di ba you have your two as your base. Ang uuri niyo po dito, you need to get um, the base with the lowest exponents. Sa base na two, ang ating po rito ng lowest exponent ay one. This is two raised to one. So, we need to get two. And then, sa base na three, Ito po. Sa base na 3, we have here 3 raised to 2. Ang mangyari po ay kukunin po natin yung 3 raised to 2. That's why the GCF is equal to 2 raised to 1 times 3 raised to 2. Yan po. Again, kinuha po natin yung base na merong lowest exponents sa 2 and 3. That's why meron tayong 2 raised to 1 times 3 raised to 2. And then, Simplifying it, that will give us 18 as our GCF. Okay? Yun po. Eh, sir, paano kapag LCM naman po yung kukunin, least common multiple, isisinig ko lang po. Kapag LCM naman po yung kukunin, you can use um, the, highest, the highest exponent of each base. Okay po? Again, kapag po yung greatest common factor ang hanapin, kunin lang po yung bases with lowest exponents. Again, the answer is 18. Okay, so yung iba po gumagamit po sila ng ano, continuous division. Nice. I hope na sa mismong comment section po natututo rin po tayo kasi po ang dami po magaling na mga trainers na nanonood ngayon. Let's move on to our next problem. Okay, so here's the problem. The angles of a triangle are in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5. What is the degree measure of the largest angle? Again, uh, yung ganito pong problem, meron po siyang variation. Pero, nakafocus lang po siya ngayon 
Ang tanong dito, ah, wala pang question mark. Ang tanong po dito, what is the degree measure of the largest? Ang pinapana po, yung pinakamalaking triangle. Uh, though nasa grade 6 po yan ating mga sudyante, is it important na matutunan po sila ng theorems na sikat? Kasi po, um, sikat po yung theorem na, na po, na that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle, of any triangle, is equal to 180. So, paano po ang approach nito algebraically? So, you can teach this, teach this algebraically. And ito po, yung ating pong ratio, i-attach lang po natin yung variable x. By the way, you can use different variable. Ha? Okay, we have here x plus 3x plus 5. Again, x plus 3x plus 5. Now, yan po. Now, we have here 180. Ang tanong, saan ang galing 180? We know that the sum of the interior angles is equal to 180. So, kapag inag natin yung tatlong angles natin, that is equal to 180. And then, add lang po natin, that will give you 9x is equal to 180, and then divided by 9. So, that will give you the value of x as 20. So, dito po, wag, may nagkakamali pa rin po rito mga sudyante. Emphasis Emphasize po natin that in this problem, we are asked, what is the largest? So, pupuntahan nyo ngayon yung ratio. The ratios are 1, 3, and 5. And our largest po rito is yung 5. So, you will do 5 times 20. Yeah, that's why the answer is 100. Okay. So, marami po sa atin na ako ang tama sagot. At yung iba po, binigay po po yung Lahat ng angles, the angles daw po ay 20, 60, and 100. Okay, that's good. Next po natin, let's have item number 4. Ito po. The ratio of the radii of two circles is 6 is to 11. What will be the ratio of their circumference? Yan. The ratio of the radii of two circles is 6 is to 11. What will be the ratio of their circumference? Now, um, kailangan, alam na po ng mga bata yung formula for circumference. We have here, ang formula po nun ay circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Ngayon, we can express the ratios, ito yung r natin. r1 is your, is your first ratio and r2 is the second ratio. Okay? So we have here 6 over 11. Okay? Now, paano natin yung solve to? Kaya ang given sa atin ay yung ratio ng dalawang circle at pinapahana yung ratio naman ng circumference nila. So, lagay po natin, we can have this kind of solution. Circumference 1 over circumference 2. That is equal to 2 pi 6 and 2 pi, 11. Okay, sir, bakit po nandiyan yung 11 and 6 natin? Remember that R1 is equal to 6 and R2 is equal to 11. Yan. And then, paano natin makakuha yung tamang sagot? We can cancel out 2. We can cancel out pi. And then, look, the remaining fraction or the numbers is simply 6 over 11. And then, ibig sabihin po niyan, ang ratio ng ating, ng circumferences ng dalawang circle with the radii of 6 is to 11 is not other than 6 is to 11. Okay? So, active yung ating mga participants. Uh, they can easily get those questions. And para po sa mga hindi, hindi po masyadong gamay yung ganito klaseng problem, you can take down notes po. And, uh, by the way, Sa ating pong mga viewers po, uh, don't worry kung medyo nabibilisan po kayo sa iba pong mga items namin, pwede po natin i-replay kasi uh, posted after the live stream, posted po ito bilang saved video. Okay? So let's move on to another problem. Yan. Ito na po. Here's the next problem about the volume of a cone. A cone has a base of, a base radius of 8 centimeters and a slant height of 10 centimeters. 
how do you calculate the volume of a cone? So dito po, ginawa ko po siya um, sa aking ano, hindi ko na po ginawa yung ano po, sa mismong presentation po. Pero makita niyo po yung solution ko dyan. Okay. So dito po, may mga nagkakamali po dito, kaya po sinama ko siya. Kasi po, a cone has a base radius of 8 centimeters and a slant height of 10 centimeters. And ang formula po ng ating cone, check muna natin mga problems natin. Ang formula for the volume of our cone is none other than volume is equal to pi r square h over 3. So, since meron tayo nakita nitong slant height, isipin agad natin that the value of h is equal to 10. Hindi po. Kasi kung height po natin ito po sa formula ng ng ating cone is yung perpendicular sa ating base radius. Again, uh, the slant height, the slant height, itong slant height po natin, is different from the height of the cone that is perpendicular to the base radius. So, ang gagawin po natin yun, paano natin mahanap yung height? Eh, di ba, ang formula nga natin is volume is equal to pi r square h over t. So, uh, not bad po na magkaroon tayo ng advanced um, topics sa ating mga trainees because as you can see, ito pong ating part dito, ito pa, elaborate ko lang po ito. Uh, from this part hanggang dito, mag-visualize nyo po that you have your right triangle. Again, you have the perpendicular height towards the base radius. So, makaka-imagine tayo ngayon ng ating right triangle. And then, as you can see, sa ating pong right triangle, ito pong part na to is yung height po natin na kailangan natin hanapin before getting the volume. So, ito po, sa ating pong triangle, this is your slant height, which is L, and this is your base. So, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. We're in yung ating pong slant height is actually the hypotenuse of the tri triangle. Okay? So, palitan lang po natin ng letter L and then yung ating letter A ay yung H na lang natin. Tapos po yung ating B is yung ating radius. So, pwede po sila magkabal mag-interchange. And then, solve po natin your L is, your slant height is equal to 10, your R is equal to 8, and then simplify this one, that will give you 10 squared. And then, ito na po. Tapos, simplifying the equation, you will have 100 is equal to h squared plus 64. And then, pasinog natin, that will give us h squared is equal to 36. And getting the square root of 36, that will give you 6. Ayan na po yung magiging height ng ating actual cone. Okay? So, kapag meron na po tayong height ng ating actual cone, we can have, or we can use the formula. V is equal to pi r squared h over 3. And as you can see, ito na po yung ating solution. Nang substitute lang po tayo. Ayan. Okay. So, meron po na nakakuha ang tama sagot. Okay, ngayon, uh, thank you nga pala kay Sir Mark kanina. Uh, she me he mentioned na meron ang kulang dito. Uh, don't for My answer here is volume is equal to 128 pi. Pero, kung babalikan po natin yung problem na we have the centimeter. Um, Mag-add na lang po tayo dito ng 128 pi cubic centimeter or centimeter cube. And again, the answer is 128 pi centimeter cube. Okay, meron, marami po nakakuha ng tamang sagot. And then, yan. Mabuti po na magkaroon po tayo. Paminsan-minsan magkaroon po, po tayo advanced study sa ating mga bata. Lalo na po grade 6 yung ating mga trainees. Let's move on to our next problem. We have here problem number 6. Yan. Number problems naman po tayo. We have here item number 6. The sum of two numbers is 54 and their difference is 6. What are the numbers? 
there are different methods na pwede natin gamitin. Okay? Yung mga bata, may, ito eh, nag ako, nag-wonder ako, ang bilis ng kanilang mind to, to use um, trial and error method. Ang galing po nila. Meron mga bata po na-encounter na uh, isang tingin naman sa problem na ganito, uh, they can easily get the number. And then, sa mga gusto pong gumamit ng algebraic way, you can use systems of linear equation. Tama po ba ako? Okay, we can use systems of linear equation in which we can represent or we can create an equation which is x plus y is equal to 54 and x minus y is equal to 6 and that will give us the answer. Good morning po. Hi, Ma'am Peña. Good morning. Shout out kay Ma'am Peña. Ayan. Shout out ko lang po yung aking minamahal. Supportive po yan. Medyo cheesy lang po pero thank you po. Okay. So, right now, instead of using systems of linear equation, kasi po marami na po nakakaalam nun, uh, I will try to use black method. Kanina, earlier discussion of Sir Mark, uh, meron may mga teachers po tayo na nag-suggest na we can use black method. So I'll be, I will be using black method. So I have here the first number and the second number. Siyempre, uh, since they have the difference of 6, yung dalawang numbers natin are not equal. That's why I'm representing it in two different um, length of blocks. Okay? Yan po. Now, ano yung mga clues na pwede natin magamit, magamit in using block, uh, to solve this using block method? We know that the sum of the two numbers is equal to 54. And then, their difference is equal to 6. At ito na po, yung kanya ng difference. Itong part na to ha, itong part na to ng block, itong block na to, it represents the difference of 56. Now, eh sir, paano siya isolve gamit ang block method? As you can see, since na-extract na natin yung difference na 6, these two numbers are equal. These two units are equal. Okay? So, we can say that 54 minus 6 is equal to 48. At yung dalawang units po natin, itong dalawang units na to, is equal to 48. So ngayon, paano ba natin mahanap yung dalawang number? First, hanapin muna natin yung number na pinakamaliit. So, ang gagawin po natin, yung 1 unit block is equal to 24. Paano nakuha yun, sir? Yung 48 po natin is dinivide lang natin by 2. Yun. Ibig sabihin, this block represents 24. Yung pink first number natin. Okay? Now, oh, nakita ko. Yung iba sa nila. Okay. Yung iba sa atin ay, ano na talaga, um, well of nasa Sing Singaporean math method kung paano mag-solve ng math problems. Thank you po sa inyo. Yan, Singaporean math method daw. Now, e kung ito ay 24, ibig sabihin, itong block na to is also equal to 24. E meron ka pang 6 dito. Therefore, to get the second number, you just need to add 24 and 6. That's why the correct answer, the smallest number is 24, and the bigger number is 30. Okay? Again, medyo hindi po yata kita sa ating screen, yung 30. The bigger number po is 30. I hope na nakuha niyo yung ating method on how to do the sixth problem. Okay? Alas lahat po ay tamang, galing. Thank you po sa inyo. Okay, active po yung ating mga participants about the answers. Okay, um, I think this will be the last problem na meron ako. I have here problem number seven. The ratio of the number of boys to girls in a class is three to seven. If there are 20 more girls than boys, find the total number of students of uh, in the class. Okay? So, in this problem, I will be using again 
I will be using again black method on how to solve this problem. We have here the blocks represented the blocks represented by boys and girls. Sabi nito, please to seven. We have here, sa boys natin ha, we have one, two, and three boxes, which is equal sa boxes na rin meron ng girls natin. Since yung ratio ng sa seven, ng girls ay seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, yung pinag nag represent ng part ng girls. So alam natin, that their difference is 20. And sabi nito, if there are 20 more girls than boys, meron silang ano, meron lamang nang bilang yung girls ng 20. So, paano ngayon niya? Paano natin solve yan? Alam natin na yung 4 units na to is equal to 20. So, nagawin natin, hanapin natin yung value ng bawat unit. Since meron tayong 4 units, which is equal to 20, we can divide it by 4 and we can get 5. So, ito ay 5, 5, 5, and 5. Tama po ba ako? So, the answer is 50. So, nakita ko sa comment section, yung sagot ay 50. So, paano nakuha ngayon 50? Ang tanong dito, paano nakuha yung 50? Again, ang tanong po dito, find the total number of students in a class. Maging careful po tayo sa ating maging answer. Since this block is 5, 5, 5, and 5. And di ba alam natin when it comes to ratio, lahat ng part ng ating ratio ay equal. Kung ito ay, yung apat na ito ay 5, lahat ng blocks natin is also equal to 5. Ito rin po ay 5, 5, 5. And since meron tayong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 blocks, we can easily multiply 5 by 10. That's why meron po tayong sagot niya 50. So, again, ang dami na ako ang tama sagot. Ang galing active yung ating participants. Thank you po sa inyo. So, that ends my problems. Seven lang po yung prepare ko para dito. I hope, alam na nag-exit na tayo sa ating time. Wow. Ang dami pa rin po nakakakuha ng tamang sagot. That ends my sample problems. Now, let me leave this quotation for you. Sabi ni Albert Einstein, I hope na sa kanya talaga ito nag-originate. The education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. Again, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. So, iniwan ko po yan para po uh, kapag po tayo nag-train, we, uh, we can internalize this kind of quotation kasi po ang pinaka-focus pa natin in doing math training ay hindi lang po matutunan nila yung mga katotohanan in the realm of mathematics. We need to train people or students, even na lang, hindi po yung mga trainees natin kahit yung mga regular students natin, we need to train our students how to think. Para po in in different cases sa buhay nila ay malaman ano ma, ma, ma po nila ma-apply po nila yung ano ma-exercise po nila yung ano yung mind nila na ay kailangan natin mag-isip hindi lang basta ay isipin natin katotohanan lang or mga facts lang ba yung kailangan natin i-apply sa buhay kasi may mga bata po sir sa natin gagamitin yung ano yung tinuturo niyo sir na topic na encounter kayo sa high school kasi ganyan sila magtanong sa akin Ang pinaka sabi ko sa nila, alam niyo ba, um, basically, tinuturoan ko kayo ng mga katotohan, katotohanan or katotohanan within the realm of mathematics. Another thing na purpose nito ay kapag nagkaroon, let's say for example, you went to higher education. Let's say for example, junior high sila, buta sila ng senior high, college, and then uh, even in employment, they can encounter encounter examinations. Diba? Examinations. And then, yung mga problems na meron tayo sa ating lesson na kung saan nag-aaral pa sila is different from the questions na present sa examinations na encounter nila. So, dapat, 
ang sabi sa nito, dapat you know how to think. Hindi kailangan passive lang tayo, hindi kailangan kung ano problems na meron tayo sa ating klase or sa ating coaching ay parehas sa mga kuha nila. Kailangan malaman nila na um, this concept, marami possible problems. Okay? Another thing na kailangan na sinasabi ko sa nila, third, aside from yuturo ko sila ng mga katotohanan about the realm of mathematics, bukod sa hinahanda ko sila sa mga future examinations or interviews, sabi ko sa nila, actually, or practically, ito ay panghasa lang ng ating mga mind, ng ating mga utak. Okay? Panghasa lang. Para kapag naka-encounter ka ng mga different, different situations or problems, ay hindi ka mag-short circuit or hindi sila mag-short circuit in dealing with those kind of problems. Again, we need to give them the basic concepts of facts. We need to prepare them for future examinations. And then, hinahasa po natin yung kanilang mga pag-iisip. Para hindi sila mag-short circuit. Okay? That will end my discussion. And I hope na enjoy kayo from the discussion of Mamel, Mam, uh, Sir Mark. And sa my discussion, though basic lang po yung minigay sa'yo, I hope natut natuto po kayo. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. God bless po sa inyo. Okay. So sa mga nagtatanong po about the registration form na meron tayo, ito po yung flash po natin. Yung ating pong link. Kasi po, ang dami po natin registrants. Pero ito lang po yung binang ng ating live streamers. Right now, we have 165 active live streamers. Yan. Ayan po yung ating link. Pwede niyo pong copyahin yan and then later on you can go and type that sa, sa ating Google. And then by the way, para po sa atin po, I will give you this problem. Hindi ko muna po ipapakita yung solution. I will give you this problem and I hope na ma-share po natin sa ating uh, mga social media account kung paano po i-solve yan. Uh, you can do algebraic method pero I recommend na no, share po natin yung, ano, yung black method because hindi po siya usually ginagamit sa Philippine setting. Okay? So, again, yung problem natin, I hope na you, you can solve this one. Screenshot nyo po. I-solve po and then share to your time, timeline and use the hashtag um, MathTeachPH para po sa naghahanap ng ating pong resources. Wait lang po ah. Share ko lang po yung ating page. Para po sa naghahanap po ng ating resources, wait lang po sa mga nagtatanong po ng ating, ano? Ito po. Yan. Home tab tayo. So, by the way, ito po yung ating group na kung saan na kung saan pwede niyo pong makita yung ating downloaded kita na po ba? Ah, wala pa. Sorry. Hide ko lang po ito. Share screen po rin tayo. Application window lang po tayo. Yeah. Yeah. Sa mga naghahanap po ng ating resources, uh, ito po yung ating, ano, yung ating pong Facebook group. So we have here the math teaching resources. Later on po, uh, kapag kaya na po ng time, after po ng aking tutorial, um, i-upload po namin yung aming presentation simula kahapon hanggang kanina. I hope na magpa-member po kayo sa group na to. Wala pong bayad. And uh, we are not doing it para po mag-gain ng... Um, money. Kaya, kaya lang po namin gustong parami yung aming subscribers ay para mas dumami po yung makakita ng mga content ang aming page. And then po, baka you can also consider this page. Yan. Ito po yung ating math teaching resources. Baka hindi po napansin kanina. Yan po. Yan po yung Facebook page po natin. Ah, group po natin sa mga nanonood po you can go to your YouTube uh, Facebook account and then search nyo lang po Math 
teaching resources. Okay, right now, meron, meron pa lang po tayong 4.2 members. And then, baka you can also consider uh, to like my page, Math Teacher Don. I hope na ma-share niyo po yung ating mga contents. Diyan po tayo nagpapos ng ating mga announcements. And then, lastly, I, I would like to plug in my YouTube account. I hope na kayo po ay mag-subscribe. Maraming salamat po sa inyong support. Sa mga nakasubscribe po, nakasubscribe na po, uh, you can hit the bell button para kapag meron po tayong future uploads sa ating webinar o kaya ating mga recorded videos is madali po kayo manonotify. Again po, meron po yung bell button para po, ito po, meron po tayong bell button dito. Pag click niyo po yan, manonotify po kayo. Okay? So, again, uh, I'll be leaving you po. So, punta lang po natin ang gagawin sa Sir Mark. Sir Mark, Boy. hi! Bigla. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you very hello, much. Sir. I hope you learned something. Salamat po sa mga nanood ngayong araw. Okay, yun lang po, Sir Gon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Salamat, Sir Mark. Si Mamel po ay, ano po, meron po siyang engage, engagement pong pupuntahan or meeting na pupuntahan. Kaya po siya nag early. So, maraming salamat po sa inyo. And sana supportan niyo po yung anima channels and pages. And don't forget to support us sa ating mga future projects. Again, I am teacher Gon. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. And let's this, let's end this by a prayer po. So, pray po muna tayo. Dear Father God, maraming salamat po sa araw na binigay niyo po sa amin para together, together po, even po sa online po yung aming gathering. Lord, we pray na ituloy niyo lang po yung pagkatuto ng mga teachers natin, students, uh, parents, and even the school administrators para ipapatuloy lang po yung edukasyon sa Pilipinas, lala po sa SIP9 or mathematics. Lord, uh, guide us through this day and guide us sa mga future sa future po namin sa Philippines and sa buong mundo and I hope na marami pa rin pong mga tao ang maging mabait at maging considerate sa bawat isa. Lahat po na yung pinapalalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. God bless.